View for Tightrope, starring Clint Eastwood, directed by Clint Eastwood and Richard Tuggle. So the movie, if he follows him, he's a cop. He has two girls, two little girls, or one's like a teenager, early teens, and then one's, one's pretty young. And he, cool setting, it's in New Orleans, kind of different, I, I liked that. Really cool photography in this movie. But he's a cop, there's a killer on the loose, um, a serial killer. And then, but then with synopsis, when he gets too close to the hunter, suddenly he becomes the hunted. So the killer begins to target people close to him. And that's pretty much the uh, plot of the movie. So good movie. Um, it's 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 interesting because he, he like, he, you know, he's a cop, but he kind of. I'm not sure you call it illegal things, but he's kind of skirting the edges of the seedy underworld. Like, he goes to see, let's say, Ladies of the Night, um, because he had a wife, but she ended up, she left, she left, just like, I think in the, like, in the middle of the night, and she left him and his kids, um, but she still lives in New Orleans, and now she kind of wants to get back into the kids' lives, um, I don't even think they, that she says one word of dialogue in the movie, because she's kind of, a, you know, and then she hooked up with another guy, like a really rich guy, so she's got all this money now, um, and she's, she's trying to visit the, the uh, two kids, um, the teenage daughter doesn't really seem to like her that much. Because she did kind of abandon them. It doesn't say how long, I think, but for, you know, like a, a couple years. Um, so she wasn't happy. So a after that, he started to kind of, like I say, say la ladies of the night. Um, but he also uses them f for, like, informants. So, um, but yeah, and he goes to these bars, these seedy bars, uh, hits on women. Um, he, you know, he does a lot of drinking in the movie and then he, then there's this killer out there who's targeting women and then, and then the killer starts to target people around him. So it's, it's, it's a pretty good movie. Uh, I liked it. So Richard Tuggle Okay, he directed Out of Bounds. Remember Rambo Ralph for Life did a review of that movie, and he, he thought it was pretty bad. So, um, and that's with Anthony Michael Hall. But he, he helped write Escape from Alcatraz, uh, Out of Bounds, and Some Tales from the Crypt, one episode. So, that, that that's how he connects with uh, Eastwood is Escape from Alcatraz. Um, and he wrote the screenplay for this movie. So, 1984, uh, it's, it's got a good look to it. I liked it, especially the New Orleans setting. It, it's different than, than, uh, well, what you usually see. Um, especially with Eastwood, because, you know, with Dirty Harry, it's set in San Francisco. And then with, um... You know, his westerns, they're kind of, you know, set in the, usually in the southwest of the United States. Um, so it's in Louisiana, it's in New Orleans. But, um, but yeah, I, I liked it. Um, wonder who the cinematographer is. Let's see. Bruce, oh, S Surtees, okay. Yeah, he, he shot, uh, I think he shot Hang 'em High, right? Oh, he shot Pale Rider. Okay, so he, he, he knows him. Pale Rider, Tightrope, Beverly Hills Cop, Sudden Impact, Escape from Alcatraz, okay. 
So really good, really good cinematographer. High Plains Drifter, Dirty Harry. So he kind of is, you know, goes back to people he knows to uh, shoot and help direct the movie. It's a little different because, I mean, I'm not sure if there's another movie where he co-directed it. A um, little different for Eastwood because usually it's just him directing. But it's got a nice look to it. Um, Roger Ebert gave it uh, three and a half stars. So he says uh, most most modern police thrillers are simple-minded manipulations of chases, violence, pop psychology, and characters painted in broad stereotypes. Tightrope contains all four of those ingredients, to be sure, but it also contains so much more that it's a throwback to the great cop movies of the 1940s when the hero wrestled with his conscience as much as with the killer. The movie stars Clint Eastwood as a New Orleans homicide detective who is different who, as different as possible from Dirty Harry, the guy's name is Wes Block. His wife has recently left him, and he lives at home with his two young daughters and several dogs. He is good, but flawed cop, with a peculiar hang-up. He likes to make love to women while they are handcuffed. The movie suggests this is because he feels deeply threatened by women. A good guess, I'd say. Detective Block is well-known to most of the prostitutes in the French Quarter, but his superiors don't know when they assign him to a big case. A mad strangler, apparently... Okay, now he's gonna go into spoilers, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go into spoilers. So, yeah, he, he goes into this. Um, he begins to target people around him, like the women that he sees, and, um... Then you begin to learn that uh, the killer is probably an ex-cop, and uh, and it turns out he is. He's an ex-cop who, like, 15 years ago or something, he uh, was arrested by Eastwood, um, I think for, like, beating women and doing other things to them, and... Um, Um, and then he's released, and he then begins to get obsessed with Eastwood and target people around him, women around him. He even then breaks into his house, targets his kids, um, like his older daughter, and um, then Eastwood chases him out of the house, and that's kind of at the end of the movie. And, and all, this movie also plays with, like, suggesting that maybe Eastwood's the killer, but I don't think you ever really buy that. But um, there's a number of scenes where it, like, shows him kind of in the perspective of the of a killer. Um, like, yeah, like, he, he, he likes to handcuff women. The killer does, too. The killer wears a mask. The killer also goes to places he goes to. So it kind of plays with that, like maybe he's the killer. Um, Eastwood be begins to see a woman he's romantically interested in that is a, like a feminist. Uh, she is, um, it, she teaches uh, women self-defense classes. And in, in the beginning, they kind of butt heads because she wants more info on this on this guy that's killing so she can warn women. He won't really give it to her because it's an ongoing case. Um, she's friends with the mayor, I guess, and they they kind of go out, and uh, she then you know puts pressure on the mayor. So the mayor puts pressure on Eastwood's boss, and then Eastwood then begins to kind of talk to her privately, and then the, and then they go out on some dates, and then they basically start dating. Um. So yeah, like it plays with that that Eastwood is threatened by women um in the movie and but he's also romantically interested in a woman who is um you know, teaches self-defense classes. So So it's interesting themes. Um 
But yeah, a number of times that they they, they kind of suggest maybe he's the killer, but I don't think you really buy it. But um, Dan Dan uh, Hada is in it. Uh, he's like his partner, basically. He's been in a bunch of stuff, like Usual Suspects, Mulholland Drive, Blood Simple, Clueless. He's even in Alien Resurrection, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there, there's a lot of attractive women in this movie. Because um, as I said, he you know goes to these CD bars, he goes to strip clubs... trying to find out who the self-defense teacher uh, woman is okay it's uh genevieve Bol uh be old she's pretty good good cast uh, a lot of people i haven't seen before except for dan hayda oh allison eastwood is that his actual daughter Oh wow, his uh, the teenage daughter is actually his real daughter. That's that's interesting. I didn't know that. They are pretty good on screen. And then Jenny Beck is the younger daughter. So, hmm. Wow, Allison Eastwood. She's in she's in another movie, Absolute Power, with him. She's in the Mule, apparently. Which I watched a while ago, which I actually thought that was pretty good. Um, but I haven't seen a lot of her other stuff, so. But, uh, yeah, pretty good movie. Um, <laughs> wow, in the trivia, director Richard Tuggle had a habit of not wearing any underwear. In muggy New Orleans, one day standing up on a camera truck, Eastwood noticed that Tuggle's private parts were hanging out of his shorts in front of everybody. He, he ordered Tuggle to go back in his trailer and put on some underwear, pronto. In 1990, Allison Eastwood was stalked by New Zealander Mike Johnson, who allegedly had become obsessed with her after seeing this movie. Oh man, that that's terrible. Susan Sarandon to turned down the role of Beryl Thib... I don't know. Uh, Thibio? It's a French, because they're in Louisiana, which is, I think, the self-defense uh, teacher. As she explained to the LA Times in 92, the link between violence and sex was very strong. I remember it quite clearly, because I was completely broke, and I was desperate to work. And I think that Eastwood is actually a pretty interesting guy. And I met with him and he said, aren't you worried, especially you, who everybody thinks is like man person felled, that when your character starts to do some of the stuff, it's going to have a link. Okay, I don't know. She didn't want to do the role, though. Huh. I would have liked to see that. I, I really like Susan Sarandon. Um, hmm, that would have been interesting. The movie was originally set in San Francisco, because, but because that city was associated with the Dirty Harry movies, the movie setting had to be relocated to another American city. New Orleans was chosen. Well, I'm glad that it's not in San Francisco. Yeah, because there's a bunch of Dirty Harry movies in San Francisco. And I looked up Eastwood. He was born in San Francisco. <laughs> Clint Eastwood was concurrently having affairs with several actresses who appeared in the film, including Jamie Rose. Yeah, the, yeah, there's a lot of attractive women in this movie, uh, definitely. <laughs> and, he, and, and, he, and he hits on a lot of women in this movie. The narrow streets of the French Quarter produced problems for the production, as this made it difficult for production trucks to mobilize.
But yeah, I mean, I think that's about it. So, you know, spoilers, like I said, um, the guy uh, ends up being a cop, an ex-cop, and he works in this, like, beer packing factory, um, this beer Dixie, which actually Clint Eastwood drinks in the movie, too. So there's all these connections to him. Like, he, like the guy's, like, obsessed with him, kind of. And, um... And yeah, and he goes crazy, and he targets Eastwood and the people around him, and the women around him, and other women of the night. So, but um, yeah, if that's if it sounds interesting, uh, check it out. Uh, I've never, I, I've just kind of stumbled onto the movie. Um, it's kind of a forgotten movie, I think. But uh, yeah, it's good. I think he did Pale Rider right after this. So, because that, that's 1985, I think. So. Um, but yeah, another movie where Clint Eastwood's a cop, so, but, uh, yeah, that's about it, though. Uh, if you've seen the movie, uh, like, comment below, um, let me know, uh, you know, if you like the movie, or if, if you prefer maybe his Dirty Harry movies. This isn't, like, an action movie like that. There's, there's some action at the end and maybe in the middle, but it's, it's not really, the, like, a, that kind of movie, so... But, uh, yeah, uh, that's about it. See you next time.